the Kildare versus Mead rivalry. Like two two fine counties. Now they're obviously not on, on top at the moment, but uh, if even if you think historically, a lot of famous people from both of these counties, just looking through the history books there, Arthur Guinness, he's been responsible for an awful lot of poor behaviour. I know you don't drink, but he has a lot to answer for in my life. Ernest Shackleton, great explorer. Ruby Walsh, Christy Moore, who we crazily kind of said in one of our videos is from Clare. He's actually a Kildare man, so uh, sorry about that to both counties. And then Mead, Pierce Brosnan, Tommy Tiernan, who obviously isn't very funny, and, and Francis Beaufort. So you have you've a fair selection of famous people from both. Yeah, Jesus Christ, like that's like a who's who, in fairness. Uh, it, it's funny how Francis Beaufort is the one that stands out for me. I used to teach a bit of geography and used to always go on about Francis Beaufort invented the Beaufort scale, which measures basically wind speed and the damage that wind does. So like zero on the Beaufort scale would be, you know, no breeze. Nine would be total destruction due to a wind. But that's a fair fair who's who now of, of people between those two counties. Yeah, I sat beside you at a few matches and you could do it having a little uh, Beaufort scale behind you. Yeah, oh, that that's uh, you're after lowering the tone already, shall we say? I lower the blade as we go along too. So Pierce Brosnan probably the worst Bond. Tommy Tiernan not the greatest comedian. Tommy Tiernan an unbelievable uh, show host. In fairness, now I'll tell you that his his show, the Tommy Tiernan show, is probably one of the best things on TV. Probably because it's unscripted. It's funny. I would say like his show is unscripted. His Com comedy is more scripted and the show is better than the comedy, I would say. The flip side to that is he does stare at people an awful lot like this and I find that a little bit annoying. But anyway, we'll move on from that because um, it's in because Dublin have dominated Leinster for so, so long at this point. They just collected so many medals. Meads obviously won it in 2010, but I don't think anyone really counts that because Louds were robbed, poor referee and decision. So essentially, if you were to go on titles that are earned and deserved, it's 2000 since Kildare last won a Leinster title. 2001 for me, you know, if we're being really, really honest about it. It's kind of funny though, because before that, Dublin actually struggled between 1995 and uh, 2002, didn't it? Big time, yeah. Like for a county the size of Dublin to to not win a Leinster title for seven years, is absolutely massive. It's a massive amount of time for them. And it's funny we're talking about Meads kind of last Leinster title, and we'll go into it. We'll go into it in more detail. But when you when you look at you know Sean Boylan's Mead career, Sean Boylan won eight Leinster titles when he was Mead manager. But if you take two thousand and ten out of the equation, Mead haven't won a Leinster title since Sean Boylan finished as Mead manager in two thousand and seven. Their last one is 0-1, which he, which he kind of resided over. They haven't won one since then, really. I, I don't count 2010. I just can't. I know the 10-year anniversary is here at the moment. I just can't count that because Loud were absolutely robbed. And the least they should have gotten was a replay. But, yeah, it's funny. And for two counties with the population that they have, everybody's, like, whatever about, you know, uh, an Offaly, which might produce a team every now and then, which we have in the 80s and even in the 90s, you know, t counties with the population of Mead and Kildare, people expect them to be far more consistent. They expect them to be challenging the whole time. And in recent years, they, they haven't been. And by the way, if you want to get these jerseys, the fairly slick Kildare and Mead ones, go to orgaretro.com and put in the promo code or game if you want 15% off, which you obviously do. Who wouldn't? But um, I was actually looking through the history books thinking, there's going to be a huge amount of Leinster finals between these two teams, but you know Kildare were in the in the doldrums for many years at, at, at certain times. But like 1930 was the first time they met in a Leinster final, went to a replay, which Kildare won two six to one two. Then you had to wait till 1966 when Mead won one nine to one eight, and then of course 1998, which was quite a famous day for Kildare because that win at Croke Park, that was their first Leinster title since 1956. So, so like a 42-year famine being ended, that was a huge thing. Glenn Ryan was captain. There was that uh, famous Brian Murphy goal, the substitute, great kick pass across from from Martin Lynch. and Or sorry, yeah, Martin Lynch. And he was involved in like 1-6 or 1-12 that day. But around that era, because you would have been following the Offaly team that actually beat uh, Meath in 1997. So you, you probably would have been following these, these teams fairly closely. Oh yeah, massively closely actually. Played a mini sevens, played football mini sevens in Crow Park before uh, Mead and Offaly in the Leinster quarter final in 1998. And while we beat them in 97, which we'll probably go into in a bit more detail in a minute and go into that season, a remarkable season, 
Mead, Mead were pretty invincible at the time. Mead were, like, they had so many enforcers, you know, and you think of Martin O'Connell, Tommy Dowd, uh, you know, the flair and flamboyance of Graham Garrity and Trevor Giles, you know, John McDermott, pe- teams just generally couldn't get around John McDermott. He was just an absolute powerhouse in the middle of the field. So they kind of had that, they had that style, but they had the substance to it as well. And I don't know, it was a funny one with, with, with that team when Sean Boylan was over them. And we'll definitely go into it in 97. They were, they never looked like they were beaten. They were always able to, you know, pull some sort of rabbit out of the hat. And it was, that's when, you know, when you get used to winning and teams are playing against a team and they're like, you know, everything has to go right for us to beat these lads. And you have to be up nearly by 10 points or they'll get three goals or some, they'll conjure something. And invariably they did. I don't know. They just had that kind of mythical kind of status to them. And they were able to back it up in fairness to them. They were they were a quality, quality side and teak tough as well. You kind of mentioned um, Boylan already. So like if, if you look at two of the most iconic managers in the history of Gaelic football, it's Kerry Mann, Mick O'Dwyer, who had two stints over Kildare and Sean Boylan, who was over me for 20 plus years, sort of an Alex Ferguson type figure there. And I was looking at the last time that Kildare have won a Leinster title without Mikko was 1956, you know, because he led them to, to glory in 98 and 02. And it's interesting that that was the same year that he made his debut as a Kerry player, 1956. It's really crazy the way history kind of throws up these quirks. And then Boylan, like you say, I mean, he had those eight Leinster titles, 86, 87, 88, 90, 91, 96, 99, 2001. Jeez, they must have been hated. But it comes back to that there was like six or seven years there between 96 and 01 where it was just all Meath and Kildare and obviously that awfully one thrown into the mix as well. But maybe we'll jump on to 1997 and that famous trilogy because Meath came in as All-Ireland champions. Um, so they probably felt like they had the edge over everyone. Drew the first day, won 9 to 12. Then the second day, like talk about a free scoring game after extra time, 317 to 220. And that famous Trevor Giles penalty, which of course uh, led to quite a dramatic 30 or 40 seconds. Yeah, it doesn't get more dramatic than that. Do you know Do you know one of those games where you, you as we said, said in previous videos, where you don't actually have uh, an affiliation with either county, but you can still remember where you were. I remember it was on holidays down with my cousins down in Wicklow. For that sec, for the for the replay game between Kildare and Mead, and just drama after drama, like just if we were to go into it a small bit. So in the second game, uh, Mead were reduced to fourteen men when Graham Garrity was sent off, and they were looked like they were going to be dumped out of the championship. Trevor Giles missed a penalty, and it's like that's it. Mead have had their chance. Uh, Kildare have weathered the storm. Davy Dalton caught the ball from the rebound. A Christy Byrne save, booted it out over the sideline. Everyone rejoices. The hill goes wild. Everyone is absolutely delighted. But Mead still have one last chance. Ollie Murphy lobs a ball across Davy Dalton. It was in his hands and he just let it slip. And then Giles, who in the classic GA, 30 seconds, he's a zero. And the next minute, he's he's a hero again. And he got his chance for kind of retribution. And they were able to get a draw out of that. And even just Davy Dalton. Davy Dalton is a fascinating character. He obviously, he rem- he's kind of, he just remembered himself, obviously, for dropping the ball. But he had retired two weeks before they played Leash in the championship. He got, I said he got a call to come back. At that time, I was playing well with the club, but I was delighted to go back. I was fresh and fit. I got an all-star that year after being retired until early May, and he got a Leinster medal the year after. I'd been playing 13 years before that and won nothing. He said, look, has a big part of it. And just talking about look, like, when you go back through, when you go back through that game, it went to extra time. It, was a, it wasn't quite the long, hot summer, but it was an absolute scorcher of it. It was a scorcher of an evening. And uh, the referee actually had to go off a cramp after after normal time. So referee Pat O'Toole pulled up a cramp and John Bannon, obviously the famous referee from Longford who refereed several all Ireland finals, uh, stepped in. But I remember Sean Boylan talking after in training, like Mead were um, ferociously fit and one of, the, one of the things was if you're going to beat Mead, you're going to have to match them for fitness. But they used to have a load of speed balls in training. Like there's all, like Graham Garrity, uh, Evan Kelly, Paddy Reynolds, all these lads, they used to all kind of race against each other near the end of training and it was a race to see you know, who was the fastest or whatever. But Jody Devine was one of those guys that was always there up with the, the big dogs at the end of training when they were doing these 100s or 200s. So Jody Devine was traditionally a sub, normally a sub with Mead. 
But when Boylan kind of realised that he needed some sort of a spark going into extra time, he brought on Jody Devine. And like it's typical, like you might go into it there now, it's like divine intervention, really, because it was one of the great super sub performance probably in the history of the GA. Yeah, I scored four points from play. And then by the time of the replay, uh, Devine, he was quoted as saying, Darren Fay, Graham Garrity, Mark O'Reilly, they were all suspend- suspended and we had a couple of injuries too. So you kind of snuck one against the head there, didn't you, Offley? Well, it's like this. Tommy Lyons came into Offaly in 97 and they were all on the Neutron diet and lads had lost a load of weight and they were absolutely flying and they'd had a, a long enough passage through themselves. They'd a draw with Westmead, an, an absolutely atrocious game, one of the worst games I've ever been at, eight points apiece over in O'Connor Park and they beat Longford as well. They actually came from Division 4 that year but they had a couple of weeks kind of rest, not rest, but a couple of weeks getting ready for Mead. Mead fell into the Leinster final. We're missing, as I said, three of their best players uh, Roy Malone got two goals Peter Brady Vinnie Claffey were deadly that day uh, Cottle Daly I remember that, I remember it all Rona Mooney midfield and it was a real kind of a sneak attack uh, Mead probably thought they had the hard work done after the beat kill there in that uh, over those epic three games but uh, we kind of snuck one against the head but it's just interesting Jody Devine just kind of talking going back about the 97 game as well like even we talked about the game going to extra time but that was kind of only where the drama began because Kildare looked home and hose in extra time they were 3.16 to 2.13 up after the first half of extra time then Jody Devine came in and did his kind of Superman kind of uh, impersonation kicked kicked four points is absolutely unbelievable and like he did an interview uh, a couple of years back and he said that's what people still talk to him about they still talk to him about that day coming on kicking four points he said as well he just said it was just one of those days and another day I might have kicked one or two of them and the others would have went wide but it just happened to go right for me on the day and the last 10 or 15 minutes nothing could go wrong for me it was just part of an amazing three game series and it was and funnily enough we talked about Davy Dalton earlier a lot of people would have said that because Kildare were beaten that day I was saying oh Kildare no bottle or anything like that they'll never get, never get the job done but Davy Dalton said that it, while it hurt them at the time it also kind of hardened them so most people thought it would have the opposite effect so he said me bro all Ireland champions so the fact that we could compete with them in 97 gave us a bit of belief and impetus to go back and put the work in again I think the three games against me in 97 were crucial to the development of that team we got loads of experience from playing those games and that stood to us going forward even though we lost the last of those three games they really stood to us so it's just kind of funny they didn't get over the line but they were battle hardened and ready to get over the line when they did meet them the year later yeah under Miko and um, one of the players that scored a goal in that trilogy was William McCreary he kind of pulled up I think he got burst as he was putting the ball to the net he scored uh, I think it was a couple of points then in the 98 Leinster final but another kind of giant of the horse racing world yeah, he was known as a giant of a midfielder, obviously, but he's he's cut out a really, really good career as a, as a, as a trainer there in Kildare. Um, he's won several several group races on the flat. He'd be mostly a kind of a flat operator. And anybody that follows him on Twitter, he's uh, he's amusing enough on Twitter. You see videos of him up, and there was a brilliant video. Uh, it was actually a sprint between him and the trainer, Gordon Elliott, who's actually from Mead, funnily enough. So it was Kildare against Mead, and they were running down... Um, I forget which track it was, but it was quite it was quite downhill and Willie and Gordon were kind of neck and neck after the first 50 metres and then, and then Willie pulled up the more than the referee did going into extra time Willie pulled up with some sort of an injury and Gordon Gordon streaked away but uh, yeah he's cut out it's a funny one because he, he obviously wasn't really born into horse racing but he's cut out a fair career uh, in racing but he was just, like I remember him first and foremost as a, as a brilliant midfielder dominant midfielder I remember being at Croke Park uh, nine years ago now watching a Leinster clash between Meath and Kildare and neither of them were giants at the time obviously Meath came in as Leinster champions but you know I mean asterisk city there for that but Graham Garrity had been brought back into the panel by Banty who was the first outside manager I think Meath had ever had and a couple of his selectors had walked away Liam Harnan and Barry Callahan. they quit over over this and, and Garrity's brought into the game 38 years of age been away for three years Joe Sheridan obviously the hero of 2010 Knocked the ball into the area. You're looking at me being four or five points behind. Garrity comes in, palms the ball to the net, turns around celebrating. Really good goal. I remember being there looking down at it, thinking perfectly good goal. Disallowed for a square ball. And it definitely wasn't because we even watched it back before we started recording. He travelled into the square for a ball that came in low, quick, a low and quick ball. It wasn't one of those ones hanging all day. Ends up getting disallowed. And the glorious return for Garrity absolutely robbed. But actually... 
it just didn't work that period and it didn't even feel like a classic Kildare against Mead clash because they just weren't like they weren't brilliant teams can I just say to you there if anyone else had got that goal do you think it would have been disallowed I genuinely think just who he was and the fact that there was a bit of controversy about his return and he was a bit of a kind of a larger than life figure in the GA like a real had his ups and downs throughout his, throughout his career and was in the in the media maybe for some of the wrong reasons but he was a Brilliant, brilliant footballer. And I genuinely think, um, I don't think if any other me player scored that goal that it would have been disallowed that day. Maybe, uh, apart from Joel Sheridan, who was obviously in the news for the wrong reasons the year before. Ger- Garrity is just such an iconic player over the years. I mean, he's had so many incidents of up and down, like brilliant, it's just such a brilliant player for me. And then, of course, there's the Aussie rules thing as well, where he got flipped onto his face. And then this comeback and still playing, with, was it Bl- Blanchardstown IT when he's into his 40s, oh, what a guy. Um, 2017, I think that was, was that pretty much uh, Daniel Flynn really, really announcing himself when they met Kildare 216, me 13. Yeah, they played in Tullamore and uh, it was Keane O'Neill's second year, had a bit of a disaster of a first year. Uh, it was Keane O'Neill's second year and I remember the big kind of talk after was they obliterated Mead. I think Graham Riley scored eight points against either Loud or Wicklow in Parnell Park in the opening round. He never got a sniff that day and was, was pulled off. But all the talk after was, OK, we're crying out for rivals for Dublin to stand up within Leinster and Kildare are finally going to stand up. And the big talk was, you know, Daniel Flynn, ex-professional AFL player, back on board. Paddy Brophy, ex-professional AFL. Kevin Feely, ex-professional as well. This was all the talk. And it was like, you know, you're dealing with, they've got three three lads that have been in a professional setup, coming back into an amateur setup now. And uh, they were brilliant that day. And Carl McNally was brilliant the same day. But they went and played Dublin in, in Crow Park then in the Leinster final. And, you know, they were within they were within eight or nine, I think, at the end. But Dublin always had them at arm's length. And really, apart from the Newbridge or Nowhere game, the like Kildare haven't really, you know, they haven't really put up, definitely haven't put up to Dublin anyway. And even Mead happened in the meantime. But you were mentioning, uh, you were mentioning there about 2011 even and how it just didn't feel like, you know, this big game that it probably should have been. They've just kind of bought disappeared off the radar a, a bit you know you just expect them to be more consistent and better consistently better than than they have been and you're kind of always looking for a false dawn and maybe you're forcing a false dawn we thought there was one in 2017 but obviously we went back Dublin hadn't won a Leinster title in seven years uh 95 they won their last one in 95 and then 2002 you couldn't even countenance Dublin like not winning the Leinster title by having an average winning margin of probably 12 or 13 points in every game, let alone not winning for seven years now. It's amazing how things change. Mm, Absolutely. Now, you wanted to talk about a couple of the great names that these teams have produced, but I just want to talk about some great exports that Kildare have had down through the years, and maybe people can comment in and uh, explain to us some great Mead players that might have transferred in or out over the years. But I think the most famous of them all should be Larry Stanley. So he captained Kildare, represented by Cara, to win the 1919 All-Ireland. But he had the distinction of being the first man to walk to an Olympic track in the colours of his county when he represented Ireland at the high jump in Paris in 1924 at the Olympics, which is something else. Then in 1923, he accepted an invitation from O'Toole's of Dublin to, to play on their team against Kerry in the All-Ireland Football Final and won. He went back to play with Kildare then after that as well. So that's something else. Then obviously some other great exports, Shea Fahey, Larry Tompkins, James Cavanagh, I even remember playing with Galway and Brian Lacey with Tipperary. So if you want to take us on to the great names. Just on like the exports as well, like imagine, imagine letting Larry Tompkins go. God, imagine letting Larry Tompkins go. They must forever think about what might have been. Basically, will forever go down as one of Cork's best players, and he's not from Cork. Like basically, they wouldn't pay the airfare for him to come back from Cork to play for Kildare. That's essentially it. I remember chatting Martin Brittany about it. They know Larry well. That was essentially it. So, like, whatever geniuses were in the Kildare County Board at the time and were saying, ah, sure, leave them off, we're not going to pay that. I'd say they're, uh, I'd say they're fairly ruined that now at this stage. Just on some of the great names, I love a good GA name, be it a club or a player, but there's certain, like, names that you just remember. And Mead and Kildare have a couple of great names. Like, Hank Trainer. Like, that's just, like... 
Because Hank is like, I just think of Hank Scorpio in The Simpsons every time you think Hank Trainer is brilliant. Jody Devine, like Jody Devine is all my basically my sole memory from that 1997 trilogy. Tommy Dowd, Davy Dalton. I don't know if it's the alliteration with the kind of double D. Anthony Rainbow. Like there's like just there's so many things you can do with that name. Um, Shane Sass, Shay Sass Dowlin then as well. I just think there's there's some great names that we uh, that needed to be mentioned. We always sort of. Um pit two players against each other, two iconic players, and who better than Johnny Doyle and Trevor Giles? I mean, Giles, obviously, footballer of the year twice. Both free takers, both leaders, both half-forward line generally. I know uh, Johnny Doyle played pretty much everywhere, but um, that sleeveless jersey from, <laughs> from Giles in 1999, just iconic, isn't it? Uh, iconic, an iconic player as well. And even, like, we're talking about 97 and how... He was that good as well that he was able to, you know, you know, something really, really bad happened for him in the game. Mentally, it could torture anybody. And he's able to come back up and get a goal then straight away. His free take, and I think it's interesting that both of these are free takers as well. Both kind of playmakers too. Uh, just looking back at the 97 game against Kildare as well. Like when Giles got the ball inside the 45, he just kind of, he was able to shoot on sight. And invariably, they were going over the bar as well. Uh, as you said, two-time footballer of the year, an absolutely inspirational player. Uh, the only thing I will say about it is, because he has all those awards and was, you know, twice footballer of the year, like Johnny Doyle was never going to be in that position playing with the Kildare team that he was playing with. Trevor Giles was playing with an outstanding me team. But like some of Johnny Johnny Doyle's achievements, and you're obviously garbed in the in the Kildare colours today. If you just go through some of his achievements, an unbelievable career, and I suppose I'll always remember the little lock of uh, the little lock of grey hair that he had as well. And even he went out midfield near the end of his career. He was he was class and came out of retirement to play junior football last year with Kildare. Just that just shows you he's doing everything for all the right reasons. Yeah, played for him for 15 years, top scorer in the championship in 2008 and 2010, and that can't be discounted because. It's not like Kildare were winning all Ireland's. Obviously, they got to the semi final in 2010. Um, I, I also spoke with uh, Andrew McLaughlin, who would have played with him. And he says, I think in 2010 against Down, he was very good that day. At the end, when we were struggling to get a score, we were chasing the game and Johnny was in the forwards. But he came out to midfield and caught a massive kick out against the big Down men. He just went up and up and up and won the ball and hit the deck. He was nearly horizontal, he went up that high. He bounced back up. Hit the quick free in the dying seconds. It was one of them things where it was our last hope to get a score. From that, we got the free, and Rob Helly, Kelly hit the crossbar. If it went lower, it could have been different. But if Down got that ball, and uh, Johnny had no right to get near it, we never would have had that chance. So obviously, they, I remember him also saying that when you mark Johnny Doyle, he'll find the bottom of you very quickly. He keeps moving. He's going to test you all the time. So if you're not not actually up to it, he will very quickly kind of find you out. Yeah, it's funny, but what even what Andrew was saying there as well. He was just like he was. A, he was a small man. He was. He was. Was he? He was barely six foot. If if even he was five ten, I'd say. And he was still able to soar above those big kind of down kind of giants lads like the likes of Dan Gordon and these boys that he shouldn't have had a right to to be competing at midfield with. But that was just kind of that was just kind of the heart of him, I suppose, as well. You always knew. Every time he went out, you just knew this lad is absolutely emptying himself. Every time he goes out, every day he goes out for Kildare, he's emptying himself. Um, just on, on Trevor Giles as well, though. But what a like he Giles had the substance as well. Giles got a lot of a, like a lot of physical abuse. He would have been targeted because teams would have seen that if they can keep him quiet, they'd be able to maybe stifle Meade's uh, forward line a bit. But he was always able to rise above it. I don't have the sleeveless here and no key pack on it for the iconic jersey that he had. But like he was that good that he was able to do that, get away with it and still perform unbelievably well. There are very few players that could do that. I actually think he's one of those players who grabbed my attention more than most. You know, when you're from a county that's primarily hurling and you do watch Gaelic football because you're going to watch any sport that's on TV. And Meath were on an awful lot when I was a kind of teenage years and what have you. But he always grabbed my attention. There was a few players like that. I mean, the sleeves obviously helped. But just the fact that he was so stylish. Like Charlie Redmond would have stood, stood out to me as well because of his over-the-top free-taking um, routine. But like, he always stood out to me. And he was an underage star on the 92 and 93 teams with Giles. And he got onto the panel in 1994. And that was the same year that he was awarded UCD's first Gaelic football scholarship. So it was pretty, pretty, pretty much well known across the country that this lad is a serious player. 
But um, yeah, just glorious to watch. Like get, get scores where he doesn't even need to look at the post and he's going to blast it over from all angles. Just very clever. I, there was very little he couldn't do. And what Mead would give to to have another like him. It's funny what you were saying there. I'm not saying that either men are, but when you were saying about Charlie Redmond's kind of, you know, unusual uh, free taking routine and getting ready to pl- to do that, and even Giles with the long, long, the, the short sleeve jersey, uh, it could be, uh, it could be said by some people that they might be posing a small bit, and I'm, I, I'm in no way surprised that you looked up to two lads who were potentially poser back in the day. Well, nice of you to say. Okay, so I think we pretty much have a, a nice bit of the Kildare versus Mead rivalry covered, so please comment in if there's anything we missed out on or you'd like us to talk about again. If you want to get these jerseys, cool Kildare jersey, cool Mead jersey, go to orgaretro.com, put in the promo code, our game for 15% off, and uh, we'll chat to you again.